couple of records here. We might be able to get through this in the next week. see how's everybody doing here I am in my main living room room where I actually play these records and this is gonna be part one of three of new vinyl in my life we have so today is gonna be sort of a collection of a mixed bag of sort of the more most interesting sort of original pressings some reissues these are mostly original pressings though and I think these are the next video is going to be like sort of like mega wants, like the, the big pieces that I've been compiling and I've been grabbing. And then a third video of sort of a new records, new reissues, all in one. Some serious, like really great new records. A few have come from the Michael and Stunty streams that have been recommended, but we'll get into that. Um, some of those are kind of ones I either didn't know about or did know about, but Dante and Michael reinforcing. In any case, this Saturday, this Saturday, streaming a stream with Alex. We've done a few of these a year. It's been a while since we've done one, but this is going to be a Halloween based stream. Me and Alex Motorik 24 7 will be um, spinning DJing sets as we've done. A little discussion. That's 9.30 Saturday, October 22nd, Eastern Time, on this channel. Alex will be with me. It'll be a hoot. So today I'm playing a record here called Plus Instruments. This is interesting. Does anyone know this band? I should have known this band. I can't believe I didn't. A shout-out goes to our friend, my wife and I's friend, Luke, who turned us on to this. This is amazing, sort of minimal post-punk coming out of the Netherlands, but with a very key figure as a collaborator on this record. Let's see if you can see it there. Don't know if you did, but it is Lee Ronaldo, in fact, of Sonic Youth. He was on this record, and there's there's Plus Instruments singles and Plus Instruments going for years and years, and even even currently. But it's mainly the project of um, T. De Groot, I forget her first name, who's doing the words and music for the most part. Um, but all arrangements by T. De Groot, uh, I think it's David Linton and Lee Ronaldo. Well, I don't know. I, I don't really fully know the story of how Lee Ronaldo got involved, but they they started recording in downtown New York and hooked up with Lee. And I don't even know if he's playing guitar in this. It doesn't say what he's playing. It's mostly synth like this. It's kind of like a synth punk record. But this is DeGroote here. It's mainly her project with Lee. You, you'll hear him in a second here start shouting. So we're going to play some of this. Uh, this is original pressing on the Kremlin label out of the Netherlands. And like I said, Plus Instruments exist in many other forms and many other records. There's singles that precede this that I'd like to get, but it's just called February to April 81, and this is right around when there's Lee. Okay. 
Um, so there's Lee on that. This is, I, I can't believe I didn't know about this. It's such being, my wife and I both being a huge Sonic Youth fan. So we're gonna play some of this, and we're gonna play some of the other things we get. I've been sort of really following along with the silliness of this Washington Post article on the, the whole, you know, focus on the different sort of styles of listening to music. And yeah, this hot stamper guy. I've never actually, I've been hearing about this hot stamper guy for years. Going back to, like, the, when I first found out about the RL, Led Zeppelin 2. You know, going back, I don't know, a long time. I've never looked this guy up, and I just looked him up. I'm like, holy moly. It's snake oil, snake oil to the highest order. I mean, what did I see? Foreigner records for like 150 bucks. I mean, these are records that are in stores now for five dollars, and not just like the crappy, crappy pressing. Probably the same pressing as this guy's talking about. He used this thing called. Tu he's using like the, the words "tubi." It's got that tubi magic. I mean, I guess more power to him. He's a he's a reseller. I, I resell stuff. You know, he deserves to be in the game like anyone else, but this is, it's pretty sick. It's, I don't know. I mean, a, a, an RL leads up on two, he's selling for $1,500, and it's got issues, as he puts it. White hot stamper, though. So, I just, you know, look, if that's what you think it's worth, then I guess that's what you should pay for it. But, you can go into record stores right now and find a lot of these pressings clean, good clean condition, or, or pretty good condition for $10. It's still possible. Don't do that. Shout out to University of Vinyl Tim, who I've really enjoyed your um, pressing plant series. I, I really am into that whole pressing plant and sort of where records come from and the differences of who's mastering. I really do enjoy that. I'm not an audiophile, though. I don't really collect those records. I like finding... No, this is audiophile. Right? You guys hear this. This is this is fucking audio file. Anyway, no, I like I like finding like the good pressing of the record, but I don't really want to pay an exorbitant amount for it. You know, I want to focus and feature my sort of attention on like, okay, if I'm gonna be going after T Rex slider, well I wanna know which one of these reprise, you know, Santa Maria or is it, you know, Winchester is Winchester's known for the great pressing on it. I am interested in that. This is so good. But um, yeah, so don't, I do not consider myself an audiophile. I have records. I think I'll have to do a video on that one time because I know it would give me such good clickbait. Some of my favorite audiophile records in my collection that aren't audiophile. Anywho, this Saturday, nine thirty. I'm jumping all over the place. All right, let's get into these these new vinyl records in my life. I got a batch of some indie stuff first. This is Liars Drum is Not Dead. The last Liars record I really wanted to get on mute. I believe it's on mute, right? Yeah. It's from 2005. Um, I've had this CD with the DVD deluxe thingy since it came out. Huge fan of this record. Huge fan of this band, although I, I stopped following after the self-titled album around 2010. I know Stunty is a big fan of the WIX record. I didn't quite get into that when I listened to it. But I like Sister World a lot. I love They Were Wrong. They, they threw us, that first few albums, They Were Wrong, and so we drowned. I think it is, right? The second album. Uh, but this one is sort of like, almost like a kraut rock record recorded i believe in germany they actually recorded a version and scrapped it and then did it again completely maybe all new material i don't know but whoop, they came out with this drums not dead angus andrew the singer is still the only he's now the only one really in liars so but this one is one of the first few first three Drums Not Dead Liars. Finally, it, people are asking dumb money for this. So, someone finally had a reasonable price around $35, which knew this was probably like, I just didn't buy it. I bought the CD with the DVD. This was probably $20 new. Anyway, that's Liars. In a second, I'll play something else here. Let's play this one. 
Ariel M, the first solo album by David Paho. Papa M, he would do a few years after this. This is on Drag City in, I think, 97, 98. Beautiful cover. It's all instrumental. On the Drag City label, of course. He would do vocals on the next record, Whatever Mortal. Um, I don't know if it was the next one, but it was up there. Or it was near there. Play a bit of this. I'm sitting on my stool. That plus instruments is killer. What the? Yeah. This is a killer one. Um, this is an original Dutch pressing, as I said. Not crazy yet. You know, I had to get it overseas abroad. I had to get it overseas, obviously, which is where I get most of my records when I'm ordering online now. There's like nothing in the States anymore. But I do like the US conversion. I think there is or are re uh, reissues of this, so. I don't know how long this video is going to be. It's going to be long. No, I don't know. We'll see. Let's play a bit of the Stays Then Awake. Ariel M. Mostly performed by Pop M or David Pajo. Next, this is now his audio file. <laughs> this is the second Bob Pollard, Robert Pollard album proper, unmattered or waved out. I've had not in my Air Force for, for a long time. Guided by Voices, their prime stuff is incredible. And then you just don't need it. I love Bob Pollard. I love what he does. Insert lyric insert, but you don't need you don't need anything past the mid ninety the late, mid to late nineties. You don't need good albums in there, and I have a few, but you just don't need to go there. This is a solid record. The first side is pretty um, all killer no filler, and the second side he starts going into like almost like a, it feels even like a demo -y quality for him. But this was cheap again. But, the kind of thing you just wait for and then you get it for $20. Uh, but this is the original pressing on Matador, so that's good. You gotta have those OG Matadors. I'll skip through that. Um, yeah, some jazz. Uh, British jazz, but a French pressing of Birds of a Feather Spontaneous Music Ensemble. Beautiful cover. Uh, the year. The year 1971 with uh, Julie Driscoll, um, John Stevens, Trevor Watts, Ron Herman. Nice record, but guess what? I've only heard it one time. Let's put it on. Let's put it on. This is good though, this aerial I have. Great instrumental. I got a lot of records to show, but since I've only heard this one one time, I figured, let's do it. I took a nap, so I have, feel like I have some energy. Material Objects is back. Not back, but we, we had to take a bit of a break while our, our bass player, Liam, moved to Dublin. We have a new bass player, my friend Adam, who's playing bass six. We rehearsed tonight. I came home and took a nap. So this is Birds of a Feather by the Spontaneous Music Ensemble. Um, on the BYG, or Big Actuel. So that's what we got. That's a new record. Got this a month or two ago. Here's one that Alex really recommended I would enjoy, and I did. It's uh, uh, Remy Couvert. Remy Couvet. Uh, Paysage Anterior and he is a master or at least a player of the Hurdy Gurdy this is from 1986 it's Hurdy Gurdy and Synthesizer by Bernard Coutelon and Percussion Jean Marquier Remy Couvet playing the VA A Rue aka the Hurdy Gurdy Really good cover. Really cool, interesting record. 
to have synth and hurdy gurdy happening. One and only pressing of this one. Um, yeah, it was made available in the U.S. finally after Alex, I think, recommended this to me. Like, I think you recommended this like a year ago. So when someone put it up for 20, 28 bucks, I think it was, I went for it. Paysage on to you, Remy Cuvet. Here's one I just upgraded. I had to reissue those. This isn't the very first, but Areski um, with Bridget Fontaine. She's on this, although I think uncredited. This is on the Sarava label. I had the Souffle Continu reissue. And uh, yeah, I've ordered a bunch of records from France lately, and I just tacked this onto an order. This is excellent. Um, Richard Fontaine. Oh, right, Jean Charles Copon is on this. Who Stunty has certainly featured. Benoit Charvet, flute and bassoon. And um, that's mainly it. Areski doing everything else. Un Bon Matin by Areski. Very fascinating record. Um, I need to explore more of his stuff. This next one is another French record. Oh yeah. Maybe we'll play this next one a little bit. Pierre Favre, solos, Abanaba. All Pierre Favre, the uh... <laughs> Leaving it in. I drop records all the time. Only on camera, actually. I never do it otherwise. Uh, but this is on the uh, Futura label. There he is, Pierre. Uh, Pierre, he has a long recording history, and I don't have... I can't think of some of the more well-known stuff he's done. This was pretty inexpensive, uh, coming from France, actually. The Futura label. Let's play some of this. I mean, it's a percussion record, so you kind of need to be patient with it and really get the whole side in, but let's just do it. I'm making a mess here. I'm making a mess. We'll put them all away later. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. I do take good care of my records, despite the fact that I just nearly threw one across the room. Alright, the P.F. Favre solos, like Chris Kibler here, throwing down all these records. I've been enjoying your videos, Chris, lately, of course. This is Brother to Brother, a soul record. Had a hit with the bottle. Is it on? Yeah, it's on this. This, I think this was like a dollar. It's not an expensive record anyway. Why am I showing it? Because it's good. It's a good funk record. It's a white label promo on the Turbo label. Turbo subsidiary of what? It's certainly a subsidiary. Division of all platinum entertainment. A nice soul and funk record. It's kind of like if you like Bohannon. Some good stuff on this. Trespassing. Your nephew Woods. I'm just gonna show that one quick. Brother to brother in the bottle. Their version of Gil Scott Heron's the bottle on this. Alright, what do we have next? Ooh! Who's ready for some shrink removal? This one because it's bending the sleeve. Oh, this is Holger Shukai's first solo album, pretty sure. German pressing on the Harvest label. Love that label. And it's sort of soundtracks in a sense, but, uh, well, it's movies, kind of like canned soundtracks. Um, but this is kind of at the end of Can, but the same members working together. Uh, produced by um, Connie Plank, recorded at Inner Space. Features Shukai on words, vocals, guitar, skis, synth, short waves, bass, Jackie Liebesite, of course, drums and congas, Michael Caroli. Oh, he's only on, he's only on guitar on one track, Caroli. Erwin Schmitz, grand piano on 
that same track. Oh Lord, give us more money. And Rebob Kawahu Ba. Chicken organ on Cool in the Pool. Otherwise, it's Shukai with Libazite and Connie Plank. Yeah, now this is the original shrink, and I do not like that it is bending this sleeve. If you can see that. So here we go. This one's for you, Alex. And Stunty. And Adam. Right at your mom. You like that? Oh, yeah. It does that. It does look much better. Anything in there? No. This is great. It's kind of a avant disco, you know, funky, funky kraut record, I suppose. We should put a little bit on. Yeah. I, I know you were thinking the same thing as me. This is the Favre, the Pierre Favre. Victoria, these records are not good to needle. Whoa! <laughs> these records are not good to needle drop. Look at that. How many times can I almost drop a record? The more I say it, the more I'll probably drop it again. But Abanaba is the name of this one. Yeah, these records you really do have to sit and listen to. Like, obviously, you sit and listen to them, but I'm saying it's not good for sort of picking pieces. Ah, so here's Shukai. Movies. On that Harvest label. Maybe it's because I'm in an awkward position here. I'm upgrading turntables. I've been using my DJ turntables down here. And I believe I will be buying a new vintage turntable, so... This is cool in the pool. Shukai. Bulgar. Is it hot? Here's one I got from the Fred Putterman sale a while ago now. Esoteric Circle. It's all the Swedish, not Swedish, uh, Norwegian the greats produced by George Russell. I like this a lot, certainly in a bonk affair. Um, Terj Ripdahl, John Christensen, Arl Anderson, and of course, Jan Galbrecht. It's got that uh, Davis Winchester seal of approval there, so you got that. On the Flying Dutchman label. This Shukai record is really good. I showed a, a different Shukai record last time. I don't have that much left. Um, speaking of Alex, bought this from Plastic Oddments. Two Alex purchases here on the Contemporary label. There's Alex's donut. Um, white label promo of uh, Prince Lasha, Sonny Simmons. Um, you also have. Well, I had it off the top of my head, but I can't remember now. Uh, Gary Peacock and Mark Proctor, the bassist. And Gene Stone on the drums. 1963 on Contemporary. It's a mono. Wait, a little promo. The sleeve is is not nice. is pretty good. A little crack there. Alex always does a good job creating his records and properly shipping them, of course. This is these, you know, it's 63. These monos, you're gonna see wear and tear, but it it is pretty good, fidelity wise. Audio file pressing. I'm just gonna say audio file, like just here and there, I'm just gonna drop it in. Audio file. No, I, I'm not making fun. I, I, I'm not really. Here. No, I I think it's great. I think it's great. And I like beautiful sounding records. I just sometimes I think people get a little too obsessed with the AAA thing and it it having to be that way. I mean, just you gotta put the record on. And you, is it is it making you move? Is it making? Is it affecting you? Is it affecting your 
Is it giving you that why? Like, why you're listening to the record? If it's doing that, who gives a shit? But then again, I like collecting original pressings because I know that they are as closest from the original sort of recording, and, they, and the artists themselves approve those records. I guess I do like all analog, but I really prefer the original intent, the original document, as much as possible. Anyway, The Cry. Really good. I've only spun this once because I only just got it. Thank you, Alex. Nice record. I love Chris Lasha. Sometimes L.A.W. Lasha or L.A. Prince Lasha. Same. And this is the other one I got from Alex, a Pharaoh Sanders I didn't have. Wisdom to Music. This, I think, is also a white label promo. Am I a white label promo guy? Yes. It is. Burning record. Wisdom for Music. I love this record. Is it 73? Yeah. It's on these ABC Impulse labels. The worst Impulse label, if you ask me. The sort of neon... No, that's not true. The green one. Nah. Don't like it. But this is the, um, the neon sign style Impulse. But it's got one of my favorite drummers on it, Norman Connors. Joseph Bonner. James Branch on flute. Cecil McBee. And then two Maze apparently on this with Babadal Roy and Lawrence Killian all percussion. Norman Connors though. Kicks bat. Kicks kicks bat? Kicks butt on this record. Pharaoh. Rest in power. A couple more. So this, like I said, is like all of my like really nice original pressings that I've gathered. The next video will be like the heavy duty ones. So that'll be fun. Stay tuned for that. And then it's almost like a, almost like a wrap up of 2022. The third new vinyl in my life will be all of the new new records, new reissues. Another couple more jazz records. Bobby Naughton on the Otic label, Vibra Heart Player. This features James Emery, Acoustic and Electric, Cleve Pozar, Robert Pozar on percussion, and Wes Brown. This is certainly like a I could hear a little bit of this, maybe. It certainly is like a vibes record, essentially. It, it's got that feel. Let's play a bit. I'm not going to be editing any other sound clips. I wanted to sort of make this loose and fancy free a little bit. I dig this Shukai, though. Oh, I'm fucking all my records up. I swear I take good care of that. <laughs> Alright, we'll find that after. But here is um, Noxtagram by Bobby Naughton. I got this a couple months ago now. I'm a little behind. This was cheap too. It's nice to get some cheap records when, you know, I'm not. A lot of what I showed here was not very cheap, but not too expensive. But. On the OTIC label, the year would have to be. I don't have it in front of me. Probably, probably late seventies, I think. But yeah, this was like fifteen bucks, I think it was. So here a bit of that while I show the last record, which I will not be playing because it is an ECM. This is a the, one of the newest records I've got. I just threw it in here just because. Didn't have Conference of the Birds. Dave Holland Quartet. Um, pretty. Record almost speaks for itself. Everyone knows this one. Barry Altschul, Marimba, Percussion, Braxton, Reeds and Flute, Sam Rivers, Reeds and Flute, and of course, Holland on the bass. This is the Polydor years of uh, ECM. This is a US uh, ECM. It's a scorching record. Scorcha. This was from the Carolina Soul Auction that hit new highs for Insanity on Sunrise and just every record in general. I literally was bidding on the Don Cherry record I didn't have, which is sitting over there. But we'll talk more about this this time. I didn't have Symphony for Improvisers. One of the holes. 
and it's a Liberty pressing. And I was bidding on a Liberty pressing, trying to get it for a reasonable price. It ended up going way, way, the final price ended up being considerably more than when I just looked for it, other copies on Discogs and found the same stereo Liberty pressing for like a third, like way, way lower. Basically, it was the max I wanted to pay for the other one. In any case, and in nice shape. Conference of the Birds, ECM, from that... I mean, it was an insane collection. The East the Carolina Soul eBay auction. I know some of you out there are checking those out. I, mean, I think Dave won a couple. <laughs> Although he was watching like 89. So that's that. That's the last record I have. So, a little long. A little long in the tooth, maybe, not too much. Again, this has been Bobby Naughton. Um, Noxtagram. That's what I got for you. Hope you enjoyed this format. I don't know if I'll always do this. I might do a more traditional one next time where I put sound clips in. But again, this Saturday, October 22nd, 9.30 Eastern Time, on the YouTube, Motorik 24-7 and myself, streaming, handing off mini sets of music, Halloween-themed. It's not going to all necessarily be Halloween, mute, scary. Well, well, you'll see. You come and find out. All right, that's about all I got for you. Hope you enjoyed that. And...